Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the thing I don't stop talking about lately, which is web components. And uh, more specifically, uh, how we just started integrating Polymer one-page apps. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Polymer, I highly recommend checking it out. It just went full release 2.0 as of Google I.O. Uh, recently. And so if you're using Drupal, the best way to go about integrating this or play with it <clears throat> is uh, the Web Components module. So it's a module we've been working on uh, quite heavily the last few months. And now we've got a new sub-module as of today called Web Components Apps. And so you can read through uh, what I'm talking about in the readme file for it. It talks about how you would actually go about doing single page app development using this workflow. But uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to get the Web Components module and then I'm going to enable it. All right, so I'm going to enable Web Components module, Polymer uh, Web Components module, and then I'm going to enable the Polymer or the Web Components app submodule. So looking at what that does, the, the app submodule, if we look at what our Web Components module is, uh, I'm going to modules and then app and we'll open up the Web Components app here. And so Web Components app is going to look through your directory structure um, for uh, one page app, something that look, smells like a one page app. Basically, it has a polymer.json associated with it. What it's going to do then, once it finds those definitions, is it's going to generate a permission for each one. Uh, so, this allows you to throttle who has access to those one page apps. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to automatically generate menu routing for it. And so, you're, you're going to get apps slash whatever the, the machine name of your app is. Um, there's also, I'll show it in a minute, but there's additional support so that you can have menu items show up and data wiring as well uh, so that we can write as little code as possible and get this thing talking to Drupal. Um, then there's callback, make sure it can you know, view it. Then there's you know, loading it onto the page. Uh, and then there's loading the data onto the page. So the way that I would then, if I made a Polymer app, right? So let's say we made a Polymer one page app, which is just standalone web components. It's not aware of Drupal in any way. The way I would get that loaded into scope so I could use that is uh, I put it in a module. So in this case, you'll see I have uh, an install profile modules. Uh, in this case, I put it in the folder apps. You don't need to put it in there, obviously. But then this is my, my module called CLE Open Studio App. Uh, in there, I have a directory called apps. And then I've got my two one-page apps that I've made today. So you can see I have this one named LRN app hyphen gallery hyphen grid. Uh, if you're not familiar with what a one-page app structurally looks like when you built it out with Polymer, basically you have some uh, Bower components of all the other elements you've referenced. Uh, you have a source directory, then you have it in a standalone directory, and then you have your one-page Polymer app. So seeing what this gallery element looks like, you can see we're telling it to reference something called Scary Gallery, uh, which is another component that I got from webcomponents.org. Then we're defining our LRN app gallery grid. We're using something, some imported styles here, so materialized CSS styles. Uh, then we're doing some CSS styling, and then we're using a whole bunch of other elements here. So in this case, the first thing that this uh, LRN app gallery grid is going to do is it's going to make what's called an Iron Ajax call, uh, which is basically a really easy way to do two-way data binding between a you know, JSON-based data source, because I told it to handle it as JSON, uh, and the rest of our application. So what you'll see a lot of times is like a single um, property referencing something. So in this case, I have that property called source path. So if my element is laid down on a page and it has source path defined, an Ajax call is going to try to pull JSON from that, send it into this thing called submissions, and then the rest of the application is going to kind of start to unpack from there. Uh, it's going to generate a gallery, it's going to loop through the submission data, and it's going to print out images uh, with some metadata attached. Uh, then it's going to go down, it's going to make a paper dialogue, which lets you do kind of just a pop-up box. Uh, it's going to animate that pop-up box. It's going to make the container scrollable so that you can, you know, in case it's a monstrous image, you won't overflow. And then it's going to make just a little postage stamp that has this additional metadata in it. So I think the most important thing 
keep in mind here is uh, all of this, you know, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, it's all self-contained and it doesn't give a crap about Drupal, um, which is my big, <laughs> my big thing recently. And so uh, how we get that wired up then is if we look in the manifest.json with this. So this, let's imagine I built this in Polymer. I made this one page app. I tested it using, you know, some of the, the Polymer analyzer types of things to make sure it's a valid element. Um, I serve it up locally. Uh, I'm going to go into my manifest.json and I'm going to make one very small change. And in fact, we're going to move this window out of the way here. I'm going to go into manifest.json and manifest.json typically uh, will look like this. Right, actually, I'll take that out too. So this is mostly likely what you would get with manifest.json when you're normally working with Polymer. What I've added is a title field and this Drupal object here. And so Drupal then has menu saying, hey, I have a menu item and data saying, hey, uh, I need to get hooked up to data. You also can add in context you know, some, some little variables for internal processing, not a big deal as far as usage of those. But so um, let's look at what my, my module looks like that's implementing Polymer. Um, and that's kind of the crazy thing, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> so this is the module in question. Um, all of the logic and, and all the display and everything is pretty much contained in the app now. Um, because we can assume from the Web Components app submodule that it's going to create the routing automatically. It's going to discover that, and then based on it reading this manifest file, it's going to know, oh, hey, Drupal, uh, you need to create a menu item that people can see in this you know, menu navigation area. And, oh, hey, Drupal, when, I, when you ask for data, I need you to call this function, and that function is going to have the data that you want. And you need to uh, load up your element with this source path as a property so that you can get your data. So let's see, you know, what this looks like. I've got the one page app enabled. And now when I go back to my homepage for this site here, um, this is our old way of doing business, this assignments tab here. So this is an Angular app. This took months and months and months to build. Um, and it's very hard for us to work with. Um, talk to, to hey underscore underscore MP if you want to learn more about why we don't do Angular anymore. But these two tabs, if you can see the path there, are generated by the, um, the, uh, the, the sub-module doing the app routing. So we've got apps slash the name of the element. So if I go to Open Studio, what just happened there is it loaded up the one-page app into the, the uh, document body here. And see for where my article is. So page gets you know, filled with this. And then it added that tag to the page, which matches up here, so I get LRN app hyphen open hyphen studio. You can see I have a matching LRN app hyphen open hyphen studio path here, or tag name. And then source path, which it read off of that, um, that manifest file, right? So that's where th this property source path got filled in. Uh, source path is then pointing to the same path, but with data at the end. And so if I now go to data, you can see that we've got JSON data being returned. And so the only thing that we had to do was define that PHP function to call. Um, so it automatically builds the data path because it saw that I need a data path. If you don't need a data path, which is confusing, but if you just want to display like a widget that's got static information or it's drawing from a third party location, uh, really the only thing I need in order to get this to show up at all is, um, if I take out all of this stuff. So if I push this up, of course it would help this valid JSON, but if I push up this manifest file now, um, and this is for the LRN app gallery grid. So let's go to the gallery grid to see what that looks like. Uh, but the gallery grid was loaded here as gallery. And so you see nothing shows up because I took out the stuff that tells it to render. <laughs> um, because this needs a data path in order to work. And so if we you know, inspect element and we kind of dig through this item, we'll see that the tag is in the right place, um, but it's not gonna have that necessary uh, property. There we go, there it is, LRN app gallery grid. So it loaded it 
um, but it's not there. And then if I go to slash data, that was not existing right now. Why? Because I deleted it from that file. So let's go and put it, put that information back in there. Okay. Oop, menu and let's do data, all that fun stuff. Cool. So let's put that back up there. And we're going to clear our cache. Actually, I didn't even have to clear caches. You see it read it off and it's got it loaded up here right now. So the difference there is that when it printed it out this time, because it's in my manifest file, it added source path and source path said, oh, well, I need to get data. And because that manifest file said, hey, you can have a data path exposed, it called that PHP function. And because it called that PHP function, everything shows up all honky dory. So this is my, you know, one PHP function basically that's providing my data to, to get it into my app correctly. Um, so uh, this was able to get added in like an hour today um, <laughs> uh, because I've got this, this workflow down now uh, that we're going to be able to build these. You know, basically, we're going to start taking kind of brick by brick individual displays um, and instead of doing, you know, the workflows we used to do where, hey, here's a view and I've got this table that's really hard to work with, um, we can kind of do this hybrid approach. Uh, so we can build the one page apps for very immersive types experiences. Maybe it's for this, you know, assignment grid, if you will, right? This is, this is more of a one page app feel. This isn't views, right? This isn't a traditional Drupal type of a structure. Um, but when we do something like maybe my studio, we leverage, you know, hey, maybe I'll just use a table and I'll make my own uh, table web component. Um, in that case, I might use some of the other web component sub modules that are in here. So kind of just opening the door to a flood of web components in general, uh, whether they be injected via WYSIWYG templates, whether they be standalone one page apps that hook themselves up pretty close to automatically, uh, whether they're display mode or display suite capable, uh, just really try to set the stage for the web component revolution. Um, if you are interested in getting more web components or learning more about web components in general, webcomponents.org uh, is now almost at 900 publicly available elements. Uh, so you can go and take anything from there. That's how we built the little uh, demonstrations we showed today. So with that, tune in next time. Uh, still work being done to get it ported to Drupal 8, uh, but that's another reason to do the one-page app workflow is uh, there's going to basically be no theming in Drupal. Bye.